Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this mountain weather update. Uh, I put out my winter forecast yesterday. If you haven't seen it, um, check that out. Let's jump into this. So live camera this morning. This is up in Copper Mountain. This is in the central mountains of Colorado, right off I-70. Awesome resort. Beautiful morning. Still a little bit of smoke in the air, but we've seen um, significant improvement across a lot of Utah, across a lot of Colorado, and even now parts of Wyoming seeing a lot of improvement with lower smoke concentrations um, in the air in all these places. All right, here's what I'm looking at, my bullet points this morning. In the forecast, over the next seven to 10 days, there are two to three different strong cold fronts. And each one will kind of grab a little bit of monsoon influence as they kind of blow on through. So that's a big uh, factor. And there is a snow chance. And again, we're not talking big snow. This is very early season. But a little bit of snow for parts of Colorado, the very highest of elevations, 13ers, 14ers, the high Uintas, the Wind Rivers, and even parts of southwest Montana, like around Granite Peak. Between 911, 912, 916, 917, and 921, and also 922. So all of that is is something that I'm watching very carefully. Let me take you to um, the satellite imagery here this morning. So this is water vapor satellite imagery in the middle of the atmosphere, the mid levels. And so what you're looking at, all these reds and oranges down here, all of this is just dry air. That represents your dry air. The moisture is in these whites and these blues, and so you've got an area of low pressure right here, got a big one up here near the Gulf of Alaska, and maybe a little bit of a disturbance behind that as well. And then you've got what's left right here of Hurricane Kiko. Well, the main jet is kind of running right in this area and escorting things into the sort of the Pacific Northwest, BC area, and so this is where these two, this is where the two to three cold fronts are going to come from, riding this storm track out of the uh, the Pacific right now. Um, so here's, um, this is one, and I've been showing this the last few updates. This is effective um, 9-12, so th this Friday essentially. And what you've got here is the first cold front. You see this dip right here. What you're looking at are pressure anomalies in the atmosphere. And so when you see the blues, that's a lower pressure. And in other words, the pressures are dropping. It's an area of low pressure, cold front, dip in the jet stream. So that's important. That moves into the west. That's what's going to bring this first light snow chance and some cooler temperatures to the very highest of elevations. Let's see. Now this is 921, Sunday 921. So between, so there's one front on 912 and there's probably another one around 916, 917, and then there's this one. This is, again, 921. You can see the big lowering of the heights here, lower pressures, and the dip in the jet corresponding, and probably a big area of low pressure sitting here. So, and this takes us, again, into 921 on a Sunday. So at least there are storm systems, and you can kind of see the pattern. Everything is coming in off the Pacific into sort of the west-northwest area and then across the northern tier of uh, states. Now, I'm going to be using this type of map um, a lot come this winter. What you're looking at here is a vertical um, sort of cross-section of the atmosphere. This is Red Mountain Pass in southwest Colorado. And what you're looking at is a timeline at the bottom, and it actually goes in the opposite direction of what you would think. So it all starts over here. That's the current day. And then you go in this direction into the future on this. And the greens represent increased humidity or increased atmospheric uh, moisture. Um, so you can kind of see what happens for Red Mountain. And these are different layers of the atmosphere. So there's jet stream level. Um, down here is at about 14,000 at 600. That's what that's about 600 millibars. And this squiggly blue line that you see, that's the freezing level. So the freezing level is sitting at about 13 to 14,000 feet in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. Well, anyway, so as we go into the future, in this direction, you can see what happens. The green increases, especially on the 11th into the 12th. That's the first cold front. That's when it pulls in some of that monsoon moisture, and I think that's going to be one of the better chances for some snow accumulation across the southwest mountains of uh, Colorado. So that goes about 80, 85 hours into the future. Between the 11th and the 12th, 
that's when I think we're going to have a better chance of some moisture, some rain, snow, some snow accumulation over the very highest peaks of Colorado. All right, now this is Berthed Pass, and I showed you this in the last update as well. This is a snow forecast um, into the future. Now this one actually goes uh, in typical direction from left to right. So in that direction, that's going to be the future. And you can see how these snow chances all go up in time. So you've got um, a little bit of an increase here after 11, 12, 13, and then another increase around 16, 17, and then another increase around, you know, potentially uh, in the 20s. And this is the forecast here for snow that this model thinks is going to fall and potentially two, three, four inches. Now this is in the 12,000 foot range. So this isn't even 13 or 14,000 feet. So that gives you some idea that, yeah, we're potentially going to see some snow in Colorado, maybe down below 13, but more likely at 13 and 14,000 feet. Uh, and this is sort of a graphical way of viewing this across the West, the 10 day snow forecast. Again, not talking about a lot of snow, maybe two, three, four, five, maybe a six inch amount up here in the Wind Rivers, where you see some of these purples a little bit in southwest Montana, a little bit in Idaho, a touch over the high Sierra. And you can see the snow right there over the high Uintas and snow over some of the very highest peaks in all of the mountain ranges of Colorado over the next 10 days. So that gives you an idea, just sort of a top-down view um, over the next 10 days of what uh, what what is uh, potentially to come. Let me just show you, we'll end on the jet stream forecast. So your time is right up here. Um, this is the valid time. So we'll start it early this morning, and then we're going to work our way into the future. So this is jet stream level, about 30,000 feet, where you see these colors, these bright colors. That corresponds over here on this chart of wind, wind speeds. So that represents, what is that, 60, 70, 80, 90 mile an hour winds over here. That's where the action is. That's where the jet streaks or these dips in the jet are going to be. That's where you're potentially going to see lift across mountain environments. All right, let's move into the future. All right, here's early on Wednesday, September 10th. Here's early Thursday, September 11th. Here's early Friday, September 12th. And you can definitely see this dip in the jet stream right here and the stronger winds associated with that. And there's an area of low pressure here. So that's the first one. That's the one that's gonna potentially bring the first round of light snow to across a lot of the, uh, the inner mountain west. All right, let me clear that. Let's go into the future. Here we are early Saturday and it's crossing Utah, uh, Colorado, Wyoming, and then it's gone. And then there's another little kicker on the back side. You see it right here, another little dip, and that's gonna be that 16, 17 potential light snow as that kind of rolls through um, the Intermountain West and then it's gone and then potentially a bigger a bigger and this doesn't show it quite as well but it's kind of taking shape up here and this is on the 18th you can see it just starting to take shape that dip in the jet and that's likely going to be moving to the south so that's what's happening in the future guys that's what I'm forecasting and again we'll end um, we'll end, let me find my snow forecast map. We'll end on this, the 10 day snow forecast. So we do have snow in the forecast. It's not a ton, but at least it's something. It's, uh, it's what you might expect as we kind of work our way into the fall season. All right, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.